This is Ready. Witches, magic, murder, and mystery. <laughs> There's our new theme song. Yep. Oh, my sleeves are doing. My friend Natalie is like, I really like your podcast. I can't listen to your intro music because it creeps her out so much. Does it really? Listen, if you think it's creepy, you should look it up on YouTube. Yeah. Chloe's Lullaby. Because it has the scariest little girl. Oh, yeah. It's just a still photo for the whole video, but yep. it's terrifying. It's a terrifying. Yeah. And with that in the background, it's really awful. Yep. So, hey, this is a Witch's Magic Murder Mystery Podcast. Hey, I'm Kara. I'm Megan. And uh, we're doing a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> in case you're, in new, case you're here, new here, this is a podcast. We're really chatty. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and some people don't like it. But also, we talk about Witch's Magic Murder and Mystery yep. every, every episode. week. Yeah. Every Friday. We change it up with a new... Yeah. And we try to take turns. <laughs> yep. So last week, I had a witch. And this week... I have a mystery murder. Oh, fun. I love those. (laughs) And it's from old Hollywood. Oh, nice. Yes. I love the old ones. Mm -hmm. Okay. So William Desmond Taylor was born in Carlow, Ireland, April 26, 1872. He was sent to a finishing school in Kansas when he was 18, and he just was obsessed with America after that. So he's like, I'm staying. Yeah. This is great. Hmm. From Ireland? I love Ireland. Hang on. That's great for recording. Good job, Megan. What's that? Um, <laughs> yeet! Skirt! Yeah, skirt! No, it's all about the yeet! The yeet! Got it, boy! Thanks, Saturday Night Live. You're perfect. It's just so you know. Can you ever Google something for something? Something that pops up for Twinkies. y'all? I love Twinkies. I love Twinkies. Okay. Anyways, between 1914 and 15, he landed roles in several silent films, made his directorial debut with The Awakening. Never seen it. Uh, over the next seven years, he spent some time in the army in World War One, and he directed at least forty more films. Wow! Yeah. So in one of his films, he played a captain, and he rode a horse at full gallop across a rope bridge. And they said it was a stunt that publicity depart the publicity department dubbed the most dangerous in cinema history. A rope bridge. Yes. On a horse. On a horse. Mm-hmm. It's terrifying. I wouldn't do it. It's a brave horse. I can barely walk. Yeah, I'm surprised the horse did. Yeah, at full speed. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, he was also made the president of Motion Picture, Picture Directors Association. His reputation as a director blended with his social acceptance as a handsome man about town. Oh. I mean, he was pretty good looking. Yeah. I creeped on him. That makes everything easier. <laughs> yes. Um, he was super popular with the ladies, he was elected to the influential post of president of the Screen Directors Guild, and he was very vocal on behalf of his fellow directors on a lot of the subjects that they thought were important, um, like the release of films, um, which films were going to be based on books. He wanted to encourage reading to stimulate the live stage. So he was really involved in everything. Mm-hmm. So late one night in February 1922, a woman came home to her bungalow in the Westlake neighborhood of Los Angeles and noticed her next-door neighbor's light was still on. They said that Taylor was often known to be given, um, like, burning the midnight light, just, like, constantly doing all the things at all the hours. Mm -hmm. Like you. Yeah, that's me. (laughs) Two o'clock in the morning is my favorite time. (laughs) So early the next morning, the woman awoke to a terrible scream. Mr. Taylor's dead. Mr. Taylor's dead, shouted Henry Peavy, I'm pretty sure that's Peavy. It was his cook and his valet as he Mm -hmm. ran up and down the yard. Someone shot Hollywood director William Desmond Taylor in the back between the neck and shoulder. Left him dead on the floor of his duplex in those apartments. Ooh. Yes. So, during the investigation that followed, um, a bunch of details flooded the police reports. Neighbors reported hearing gunshot sound in the night. A few witnesses came forward claiming to have seen a man with dark hair leave Taylor's apartment the night before. One of the most corroborated details was that Mabel Norman, the actress Taylor was seeing at the time, was the last person to see him alive. She stopped by briefly to grab two books and said when she got there, Taylor expressed worry over PV, his cook, and chauffeur. (laughs) Chauffeur. (laughs) Chauffeur. Um... Uh, that he had to bail him out of jail for soliciting young men, and he was upset over his secretary, who had disappeared after forging a bunch of his checks. 
Okay, so he's got the secretary forging checks yep. and, and the chauffeur, chauffeur who was soliciting, soliciting young men. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah, he had to go bail him out of jail. So he's just stressed. She comes over to get a couple of books and he's like, just give me a minute to vent. Mm-hmm. That's what she says, at least. Mm-hmm. Yep. So um, it said that by her chauffeur... That when he was driving off, they blew each other kisses, and that was it. He went back into his apartment around 8 p.m. So we know she he was alive when yes. she left, because mm-hmm. her chauffeur saw it. Yes. So what was thought to be a car backfire was heard by the neighbors around that time. Faith McLean went to the window, the neighbor, um, and saw what she at first believed to be a man in a long coat wearing a muffler, or with his collar turned up, and a plaid cap over his face. He looked at her and casually went back inside as if he'd forgotten something. Later, she said this person had an odd walk and was funny looking. More than a decade later, during grand jury testimony, when pressed by the sheriff and asked if she could be certain if it was a man that she saw, she said she can't. She's I mean, just, how I mean, did she know he was funny looking? If he's got like, exactly. a hat like, and yeah. a muff, like, it seemed like... Like, where, was he shaped for it? Like, unless know. he was just dressed. Yeah, was he shaped? Yeah. Like, is it a weird, Was he just like, dressed weird? Alien figure? I don't know. Uh, Yeah, so another neighbor, Hazel Gillian, Gillian, Mm -hmm. maybe, Um, stated that she saw a dark figure after hearing the car backfire. Um, So with the exception of the murderer, Mabel Normand was the last person to see Desmond alive. So when police inspected the scene, they ruled out robbery as a motive and said that there had been no forced entry and cash was found on his person. Oh. Yeah. It's just really weird. Uh, uh, they just came to kill him. Isn't that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, another weird fact was that police had not been called to the scene until 12 hours after the death. So 12 God, hours after he was discovered? Mm-hmm. So later gossip suggested that they had arrived to find some of Hollywood's finest, including Paramount bosses, burning papers in his fireplace. Oh. Mm-hmm. Some claimed that a crime of passion was most likely. Uh, representatives from Paramount Studios, where Taylor was employed, came out and seized a lot of letters that they found, but Taylor had hidden some in his riding boots, and they seized all the bootleg liquor he had. Wow. Yeah. They even instructed his chauffeur and cook to clean up the blood in the apartment. Yep. So they were freaking out because the motion picture industry was in peril um, at this time because there was Fatty Arbuckle um, was being charged with rape and murder, and it was during his time of trial. Um, Did you say his name was Fatty? Fatty. F-A-T-T-Y. Fatty Arbuckle. Fatty Arbuckle. Uh Great. He was a very large man that killed, (laughs) killed a woman by literally crushing her and, yeah. So Fatty was not... No. no. The name his mother gave him. I don't believe so. I mean, unless she just was foreshadowing. I don't know. I don't know. So he killed her by crushing her? Yeah. He was doing terrible things to her. Good Lord. Yeah. But he was finally acquitted after three trials. But after that, his his career was... I almost said credit. (laughs) His credit... Really ruined his credit. Could not buy a house. Wrote. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. There's also drug addictions of actor Wallace Reed and Jack Pickford, um, and the mysterious death by poison of Pickford's wife, actress Olivia Thomas. So the motion picture industry was just kind of struggling in the 20s. I mean, Hollywood's always been yeah, scary, you mm-hmm. know? Because mm-hmm. just too many people with too much power. Yeah. And too much money. Yeah. And who live too in a much world, of an influence, right? And they and they live in a world full of people who just want their power and want their money, and so the constant yes men and somebody slamming doors over there or running into things. <laughs> Let's just stay here. Yeah, we're safe in here. <laughs> our witch will protect with our us. story of murder. Yeah, the trash witch. She's got yeah, us. Yeah, she's got us. Okay, police found the closets crammed with pornographic materials, narcotics. Um, use was also mentioned in the case notes. A and, like, lingerie bearing the monogram MMM was found in the home. Those were the initials of an actress, Mary Miles Minter, who was 19 years old. Um, she worked under Taylor's directorial. 
um, tutelage from age 17. So she had been in his life for a little bit, and she was, like, obsessed with him. Her lingerie was monogrammed. <laughs> I'm more stuck on that. Yeah. <laughs> like, wow. Yes. Why? Yeah. Did, you, did you need to put your name yeah. on your lingerie? Yeah. And it was rumored that they had been intimate with each other. How I old mean, was he? Her lingerie is there, so. But yeah. Not, not was, a huge leap, guys. He Great. was born in 1872. 72. So in 22, she was 19. Mm-hmm. So he's like 40, 50-ish. Yeah. yeah. Great. Numbers. Uh, <laughs> Math wizards. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we were trying to figure out the square footage of this mural I have Kara's outside. like, this is how you do square footage, right? I'm like, I have absolutely... <laughs> yeah. I can see why you asked me, but... <laughs> That's great, guys. I think we figured it out. I'm a word girl, okay? <laughs> I'm neither, so here we are. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, so both the actresses I mentioned, um, Norman and Minter, had visited Taylor on that tragic night, although neither star was suspected of the actual deed. The scandal first, you know, said that they were involved, so that kind of ruined their careers in the end. So the, I guess the pornographic material must not have been anything super scandalous, other than it's it's porn. pornography. But like in the twenties, it's not like it was you know it led to any deep dark secrets that he had or anything, right? I wonder what that was like, like flappers like sitting with like a garter on, holding bet, a bottle of Jack Daniels, Jim Beam. <laughs> did that is Blanton's? <laughs> How long has Blanton's been around? Don't know. Yeah. We'll go Your brother him. knows. We should ask him. Oh my gosh. Yeah, don't bring him in here. <laughs> he would love to be involved in this. Jason Kingsland he Esquire. Is Esquire, yes. If y'all can't read, he leaves us treasures like he's a fairy. <laughs> he's the, the fae. cream pie fairy. He's the fae. <laughs> he's the trash witch. Well, he, he probably is because things go missing when he's around. That's true. His ears are a little pointy. <laughs> I guarantee that's what he is. Yeah. Hmm. Birds are attracted to him because a bird got in the building that one day when he was He's here. like a Snow White. He's like a male Snow White. <laughs> okay. It says, Mabel Norman, the lovely doe-eyed brunette actress, was never a serious suspect in the Taylor case, although she was very intent on getting letters that she had written him back. Uh, mm. She told officials that she had returned to the house to get the letters, saying, not that they meant anything to anyone but us, but I feared that they might fall into other hands and be misconstrued. Oh. So she's just writing naughty things to Yeah. Him. She's 19. Yeah. She monograms her underwear. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. While Mabel Norman may not have pulled the trigger, there is a theory that Taylor's death might have been a result of his trying to help Norman kick her addictions to cocaine and opium. Norman was reported to having a cocaine addiction. It was rumored that Taylor had gone to the federal government to help catch the dealers who were selling to her. One rumor stated that the drug pushers found out and put a hit on him to silence him. Taylor arranged a stay for Normand at a facility, like a rehab facility, which um, people say that it may have been the, one of the first cases for a film actor to go into rehab. Oh. Trying to make me go to rehab. I was like, no, <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. Yes. Dance break. <laughs> yep, you're welcome, guys. So he alone was said to have spent two thousand a month, which in the twenties was a ton of money, um, on helping get rid of like drug dealers and stuff, like all this investigation. All specifically related to her, or just just drugs wow. in general? It was because just like he his hated personal it so cause. much. Yeah. Dang. Yeah. Um, he definitely tampered with. The drug dealer's business, which was and still would be a very dangerous job. Yeah, to do. so that that could be it yeah. right there. I mean, Mabel was also his girlfriend, right? So yes. maybe she could have found out about. But we know he was alive when she left. Yeah, yeah. So says the chauffeur. Oh, yeah. He. Could what if be. he was in on it? It's possible. Uh, but his, I don't, I, I don't know. So. Taylor had also been seen in opium dens where men smoked the pipe and had sex with each other. Some said there were obvious clues in the death room to a homosexual revenge killing. So, like some, what? Some what would be your that, obvious clues? Yeah, some people think that like he was in there like messing around with people and then 
they just got upset and shot him in the back yeah like came and shot him i don't know well that's what i was wondering about the pornography that was found i was like was it straight or homosexual or Mm -hmm. yeah so the other woman in his life mary mmm um was also pointed to as committing the crime of passion so her mother, Charlotte Shelby, was considered as well. It had been known that she was enraged with the 49... Oh, he was 49. 49-year-old Taylor for his affair with her teenage daughter. But in the 20s, people were getting married at like 15. Weren't they? But is it that they were both 15, though? I mean, that's a Maybe. 30 year. This is true. He was 30 when she was This born. is true. Mm. It just feels icky. What they have to talk about. This is true. I bet that wasn't their the point. love for books turning into movies, <laughs> Megan, and their, their love, love for the, monogram. Yeah, the same thing. Gosh, <laughs> how much they both love the letter M, uh, and they're gonna put it on, on and, everything. Like, what were the letters about that they wrote each other? Were those the letters that were in his boots? How did they? What were the letters in his boots? Nobody knows. Don't know. Don't know. Um, also, it says that one of the details of her part of the investigation revealed that her mom owned a rare thirty eight caliber pistol and some unique bullets, which were very similar to the kind that had killed Taylor. Some unique bullets, huh? Yeah, I don't know. Okay, were we got to like... pause again because me and this uh, cord. Scoot, scoot, scoot. Okay. Scoot, scoot, scoot. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It says Shelby was a horrible stage mother. Um, And she was outraged at the relationship. And so in the coming years, both Shelby's daughters, including Mary, MMM, would accuse her of the murder. My mother killed everything I ever loved, Mary would say. Good Lord. Mm -hmm. What a terrible relationship they must have. (laughs) Yes. One of Taylor's former valets, Edward Sands, who had previously robbed him, was also considered as a suspect, but the police couldn't find him anywhere. Ever? Ever. Yeah. So... Is that another mystery? Is he yeah. alive? We, nobody knows. So a Charles Hyam mm-hmm. uh, wrote a book, Murder in Hollywood, solving a silent screen mystery in 2004. He theorizes that the backfire heard by the neighbors was just a backfire. Mm. Um, and that the person seen leaving Taylor's was a visitor that he got rid of quickly as he planned on working on his taxes that evening. <laughs> Sounds like an invigorating evening. <laughs> um, he believes that Mary M.M.M. visited Taylor late that night. Mm. And she, he said he thinks that she threw herself at him and this time threatening to shoot him or herself. He embraced her to calm her down, like arm wrapped, like all, you know, to where his back's exposed if she's like holding the gun. He's like holding her. That's just my guess. Mm-hmm. So like this would be him. Right. She would be here with like an arm with the gun. Yeah. I have to know the angle of how the bullet went in. So he thinks that when he was embracing her, um, the gun accidentally went off. The bullet hole in Taylor's jacket and vest were not aligned. The powder burns indicated that Taylor was shot at close range with his left arm raised as if in an embrace. So I I don't know. Was she short? I don't, don't know. I don't know. Or was he embracing someone else? Because I guess they would have been shot. Yeah, what if they were fighting? I like guess she walked him? in and, yeah. Or, mm. I don't know, or what if somebody, what if her mom shot him if he was holding her and her mom shot him in the back? But I don't think, I think if that's the case, she would have more pointedly blamed her mom instead of being like, she did it because she right. kills everything I love. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she I comes. lost my launch right that has monograms on it. <laughs> Uh, okay, so it gets weirder. Okay. <laughs> so new information emerged within two days of his murder. William Desmond Taylor was not William Desmond Taylor at all. He was, in fact, William Cunningham Deanne Tanner. One time traveling thespian, Yukon prospector, and antique dealer in New York in the early 1900s. He'd been married to one of the Floradora sexet, mm. Ethel May Harrison, who was now the New York Herald who was now the New York Herald reveal? Oh, who she was now? Mm-hmm. I was like, wait, what? Yeah, so the New York. Why Herald did I type it this way? That she is now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that was all revealed on February fifth. The wife of E. L. C. Robbins, owner of Robbins Restaurant and other hostelleries. 
So that's who she is now. So is that yes. why he changed his name? Because I was like, well, what's wrong with this? It's not like he yeah. had a weird name or anything. Yeah. So he just didn't want to be tied back to her? Yep, because they had a daughter, Ethel oh. Daisy, born in 1903. Ethel Daisy? Mm-hmm. That's adorable. I know. He had deserted his wife on October 23rd, 1908. She hadn't seen or heard from him until a chance viewing of a movie in 1919 revealed to her that the actor named in the credits as William Desmond Taylor was her missing husband. Can you imagine? Going to the theaters with your new husband. You're just sitting there. Hanging there out, he is. And then you're like. Mm. <laughs> is it William Desmond? De- what? Huh. Taylor. Ta- huh. Oh, that's weird. It's odd. Yeah. Looks just like Looks really William similar. something Tanner. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Hmm. So Harrison, who was a member of a very popular dance trope called Floridora Sextet, mm. hadn't heard from her husband since October 23rd, 1908. So it gets weirder. Okay. It was revealed that Taylor had a brother, Dennis Dean Tanner, who had disappeared from New York in 1912. Okay. Yeah. So he disappeared, but it was because he assumed a new identity. Yeah. But this guy, his brother, disappeared. 1912 and has been gone. And we don't know. Yeah. So in all the press excitement, 300 people across the United States walked into the police stations and confessed to the murder. <laughs> so weird. Matt, so weird. a Canadian writer, has written, confessed on his deathbed to having been the man in the woman's clothing and having shot Taylor because... He was a queer, and he stole Mabel by giving her drugs. There's never enough evidence found from this confession, though, so they didn't do anything with it. Strange. Yeah. But why would you... So, in the end, Mabel's career was seriously damaged. You know, the first woman who was just there getting a couple books. Yeah. She was his girlfriend. Yeah, girlfriend. Um, But... A further scandal on New Year's Day of 1924, it involved her in the shooting of an oil man boyfriend gunned down by her overprotective chauffeur, Joe Kelly, who in the mode of these matters was actually one Horace Greer, a chain gang fugitive from Oakland jail. Her movies were pulled from theaters, her name um, and everything redacted, and she died at the young age of 38 in 1930. Ooh, 38. So is that the same chauffeur who said... That's what I'm wondering. I mean, if so... I saw him alive at 8 p.m. Yeah, and he also was going to shoot this other boyfriend of yeah. hers. Yeah. So that's interesting. Mm-hmm. So this case was never solved. Still today, speculation is the most mysterious of all. Hollywood scandals continues. Hmm. So 60 years later, Kirkpatrick, an author and filmmaker... Stumbled upon a real story while researching a bi- biogra- biography. Jesus, <laughs> Help it's me. not a biography of Jesus. No, no, no. On another framed director, King Vidor. Sure. Yeah, The Champ, Northwest Passage, and Stella Dallas. I don't know any. I've of never these heard films. any of those movies. Oh, uh, he, he died in eighty two. He so died in eighty two. He said, "I noticed as I went through his papers that everything from the year nineteen sixty seven was missing, and that piqued my curiosity." Then one day, two and a half years ago, I was in the basement at a Beverly Hills guest house and discovered a locked black strong box by a water heater. Uh, in it, Kirkpatrick found the 1967 papers and discovered that this man had spent that year investigating the murder for the purpose of developing a movie project. He may have solved the murder, but he shelved the project and concealed his findings. Yep. Kirkpatrick put his biography on hold while he retraced the guy's steps through 1967, using the director's notes and transcripts and interviewing those principals still alive. Among his discoveries, he was found that Taylor was homosexual. Paramount executives, already terrified because of Fatty Arbuckle's issues, sought to cover up his sexual orientation because at that time it was a big no by feeding false information to the press about closets full of lingerie and dirty pictures. Police oh. reports contained none of this information, though. Um, detectives supposedly never sought to set the record straight. Um, so they were just like, meh, we'll leave it as is. So Even we don't really know information out. what's what's real and what's true not. and what's yeah. not. So it's yeah. kind of impossible. Yeah. Um, and 
he, according to that guy's research, he said the reason the cops didn't, the real killer paid off the officials. Um, and he said that Charlotte Shelby, who was the killer, was supposedly was so enraged by her daughter's flirtatious nature with Taylor that she shot the director in her daughter's presence. So kind of like what I mentioned. Maybe mm-hmm. he was holding her and she shot. I don't know. Mm-hmm. The book even suggests that Shelby might have killed another director under similar circumstances years later. He writes that the guy concluded with, um, or concluded this after studying lawsuits filed by Minter, her mother, and her sister from the interviews with police officials. Hmm. So there's also another one. Bruce Long, um, a Taylor historian, has written the book William Desmond Taylor, a dossier, <laughs> <laughs> and runs the excellent Taylorology, Taylorology website. What? Why is there a whole website about this man? Yeah, called Taylor. Is it because of this? Like, I don't don't understand. Yeah. He doesn't seem that famous. No, but he received an email in 1996 from a Ray Long who had no relation. Uh, Long had been a neighbor of a reclusive little old woman who didn't leave the house often and had her groceries delivered. This woman, who was known as Pat Lewis, was a willow. Was a willow? No, was a widow and a friend of his mother's. One day in 1964, the little woman. Uh, who had converted to Roman Catholicism, was having a heart attack and asked for a priest so she could confess. Uh, There were no priests available, so she began to make her deathbed confession anyways in front of everybody, saying that she had once been a silent film actress and that she shot and killed a man named William Desmond Taylor. At the time, Long didn't know who William Desmond Taylor was, and Long's mother revealed that one evening she and Pat Lewis were watching Ralph's story, Los Angeles, on television... When a piece on the Taylor murder aired, Lewis became hysterical and blurted out that she'd killed him and thought it had been long forgotten. He said, but my mother never once said a word to any of us about the incident. But she didn't say why? Yeah. And that's it. So do you think she did it? I don't... Well, then there's that one guy confessing. Well, there's 300 people who confessed. So so. do we think that she's the initial girlfriend? Well, it seemed like it knew when she died that Mabel. Mabel, yeah. Um, you well, know. no, it wouldn't have been Mabel because Mabel died at 38. That's right. So we know she died at 38, so she couldn't have been this old lady. So what if it was in whatever that What if it's just some lady we don't even know? Yeah. What if it was another one of his lovers that nobody knew about? Yeah. Maybe she was the porn pictures and nobody knew. If the porn pictures even existed. Existed, yeah. That's true. <laughs> Good Lord. Yeah. That's really frustrating because it's so convoluted that now there's just no... What does it even mean? No one will ever figure that out. Yeah. So many of those old Hollywood ones, I'm just like, we'll never know who did this for lots of reasons. Like, there's so much covering up that goes on and so much money that changes hands and it's like... Well, and then, like, her driver was this crazy man. Yeah. Who tried to kill another one of her boyfriends. Like, it could be some of these people they named, but also we don't know. Or it could be absolutely nobody. Or this little old lady who died... Maybe wow. being a silent film actress. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, what a wild story. Yeah. You never know what somebody's secrets are, you know, I know. that could end up getting them killed. And it's not like his daughter could share any information about him because she grew up not knowing him. Yeah. Wow, how awful. I know. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, that's an interesting one. I know. It makes me want to look up the Taylorology website I just know. to understand why is there a Taylorology yeah. website. Yeah. What are y'all doing on here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just in a message. What are y'all doing? <laughs> yeah. In like the comment section. What are y'all doing? What are y'all, what doing? y'all doing here? What do y'all do? Uh, I'm just sat here. Well, thanks y'all for Google telling the story. Nice? Y'all Google stuff or no? <laughs> Oh, um, do you want to talk about the giveaway? We're doing? Oh, yeah. We've got awesome merch. Here, that... I've got it here. So oh, if you're yeah, watching yeah, the YouTube yeah. video, you can um, see it. We've got some awesome merch that we have been hyping up that we're going to be selling. And uh, we wanted to do a little giveaway. Of course, it'll be your normal rules on Instagram. And yeah, so go to Instagram to yeah. see how to participate in the giveaway. But we have this really great blanket. It says, uh, this is my true crime watching blanket. It's amazing. It's like a sweatshirt material. It's really soft. So comfy. And then there's a keychain. It says, what's your energy level? An armchair detective <laughs> it's so sticker. Cute. It's really it's so cute. cute. 
And in a couple of like notebook journal type yeah. things. One of them says witchy. basic witch. Yeah, they're witchy stuff. Yeah. It's really cool. It's really cute. Yeah. Um, so go find us on Instagram. Which is magic murder mystery. And that'll tell you how to enter yeah. there. Thank you. Um, thank you guys for listening every week. Oh, yeah. We love yeah. you all so we much. We love you so much. So much. And we really we appreciate hope, you. We hope your wounds are healing. Yes. <laughs> We're all getting through this we together. We hope that you've stuck with us through <laughs> all of this. Uh, all right. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Goodbye. Goodbye.